Hi everyone, I'm Dave Pardue for Imaging Resource here today to introduce you to the new Panasonic G100. Panasonic has long held the reins as one of the top companies for video in the stills camera market, but they've not quite gained as much traction in the vlogging market as Canon and Sony, not to mention smartphones. Cameras from their popular GX line are certainly out there and being used, but Panasonic has wanted a product that targets the growing vlogging market a bit more squarely on the head. The new G100 is that camera. It's just insanely lightweight, and yet still packs the full feature set that we've come to know from Panasonic cameras. And it even has a few new tricks up its sleeve. First and foremost, the G100 is small, which is a key component to attracting the vlogging crowd and allowing Panasonic to better compete with compact cameras and smartphones. But perhaps even more importantly, the G100 is light, really light especially when you consider that the four-thirds sensor inside is almost twice as large as the sensor found in the new Sony ZV-1, and well over five times larger than the average sensor found in a smartphone. And I'm not talking about resolution here. I'm talking about the far more important physical area of the sensor that gathers up the light for you. Of course, the G100 will be able to take advantage of Panasonic's versatile lens line, as well as the Olympus micro four-thirds line as well, and a few other third-party makers. Cameras like the super popular GH5 from Panasonic house in-body image stabilization systems that actually move the sensor around in order to keep the image stabilized for you. These can be quite effective and also allow stabilization without the need to crop into the image itself. But this type mechanical solution requires some mass and weight to pull off, and so Panasonic has opted for a different approach with the G100 in order to keep the weight low. In short, it's a hybrid approach pairing optical stabilization from the lens with electronic stabilization from the camera processor. When you're in standard IS mode, the image will crop in a small amount, and when you're in high IS mode, it will crop in a bit more, in order to have more latitude in adjusting for various shake and camera movement. I was thrilled to get the chance to shoot with this camera for a few days before the official product launch. And one thing that kept recurring in my head is that, in addition to being a potentially super powerful vlogging tool, that it's also a super capable vacation body for times when light weight are desired, even just for still photography. As such, I paired it with a few of my favorite lightweight Panasonic lenses to check out the various still imaging capabilities you can expect to see from this camera all while keeping the weight very light for most of these shots. I used the primary kit lens, of course, which is the super light 12 to 32 millimeter, as well as the 35 to 100 millimeter F4 to 5.6, which tips the scales at just 4.7 ounces or 135 grams. And I also used the excellent 42.5 millimeter F1.7, which weighs in at just 4.5 ounces or 130 grams. As you can see, all of these combinations remain close to just one pound total in weight. And if you carry all three lenses around with you for the day with the G100, you're still carrying less than two pounds total in your three lens kit. This makes it a terrific choice for hiking the mountains or strolling along the beach. All three lenses have optical image stabilization as well. There's a bright red frame around the image to denote that you're rolling video, which can be seen from several feet away. And this helps to ensure that you're actually recording versus just having a small blinking dot. The LCD is reported to be 1.4 times brighter than the one on the G95. And the EVF is crisp and bright as well, with a generously large eye cup for such a small camera. There's a new special mode on the dial called S and Q which means slow and quick. This lets you quickly access both the slow motion functions as well as the time-lapse features. Autofocus now comes standard even on 120p slow motion footage, which is a new feature for Panasonic. The G100 comes with the convenience of in-camera charging and it even offers clean HDMI out for video. The full kit comes with the handy tripod controller grip 
which allows you to control the shutter and video recording from the grip itself. I found the pop-up flash very handy and ended up needing it on my second day of shooting in order to capture the wrens that were nesting just outside of our door in the shadows as the mother was feeding her babies one day. The camera has a new onboard audio system called Ozo. They've paired with Nokia to bring this to the G100 and it allows for a number of neat features for use while shooting video. Basically, you can allow the camera to adjust the onboard microphone patterns in a number of different ways depending on your shooting situation and prioritize for sound coming from the front or from the rear if you're narrating as you film, as well as 360 degree recording, and even the tracking of faces as people speak. Panasonic has also enhanced the ability to control the levels of incoming sound with a generous adjustment range of minus 12 dB to plus 6 dB and the meters are large and easy to read. Forwarding upstream to test the five axis hybrid IS system. I've got the Ozo audio set to rear. I've got the mic input dialed down a good bit. IS is set to high. I feel like Captain Willard going upstream to find Colonel Kurtz. I certainly enjoyed my first few days with the lightweight Panasonic G100. I found it to be a very capable stills camera and the video features to be quite usable as well. And Panasonic makes the most intuitive menu system to navigate of any stills camera maker. Will the G100 attract the vlogging crowd? I guess that remains to be seen. The sensor size certainly outperforms many of the vlogging cameras in use today. But whether that will be enough, I guess will depend on the end user and how far they're willing to go for image quality above smartphones and compacts. Of course, we've only scratched the surface of all the capabilities housed here in the little Panasonic G100. For all the details, please see my colleague William Brawley's full preview at the link below. For Imaging Resource, I'm Dave Pardue, and thanks for watching, everyone.